advancing the programme, uh, which is a programme of work designed to increase the use, reuse and publication of OER um, across the institution, so for the staff and also hopefully students as we build up. Um, I'm going to talk today about um, a couple of initiatives with Creative Commons licensing running across them. Um, the first is thinking about um, some minimal plugging work that we've done. And for people that aren't Moodle users, I'll also show you some earlier developments which are openly available to everybody, um, so that they're, they're putting into our image attribution. Uh, and then also I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our um, new involvement with, with FutureLearn. Um, I'm sure these people have heard of FutureLearn, the Moodle provider, uh, the university is one of the partners. We've delivered a couple of MOOCs and um, decided to open those up um, under Creative Commons license as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our, our journey to doing those, those two things. Um, so, just a little bit of background, um, Open Education Resources at Nottingham started in 2006-2007 where we uh, launched the, the UNOW search engine that we got, so that's where we release um, our Open Education Resources. Uh, around 7% of schools across the, the university have got a presence in UNOW now. Um, some of those are just one or two people trying things out, see if it's something they want to engage with. Other schools have um, published on mass and we've given us a, a whole bunch of stuff to, to make available. So we've got quite a, a mature publication model. Uh, we joined MIT's Open Course Week Consulting in 2008, so we um, push content from you now to uh, the ACWC through, through RSS. Uh, we received a, a bunch of funding through the whole UK OER program, which we were very grateful for. Um, and that led us up to kind of 2010, where we um, then brought in the Open Nottingham program. So that funded um, a, a role and also a, a project, and from there really we carried out publication. And we also looked to design uh, tools and open source systems that support uh, academics and students at our own institution, and if we find value there, and opening them up to, to everybody. So that's kind of where we've been so far. Um, so OER at Nottingham has a, a number of um, hats, if you like. So there's the UNAL site, who is the content. Uh, we've also got um, Zerti, Zerti Online Toolkits, which is a, um, some of you probably have heard of it, it's a, a system that allows non-technical developers to produce interactive e-learning content quickly and easily. It also has a publication process that means you can put a Creative Commons license on what you create and publish it instantly to the web, so within um, half an hour or the learning curve, learning how to use toolkits, um, you can publish openly to the web relatively simply. Um, we've also built a, uh, a search engine onto um, Open Educational Resources called Expert. Uh, we think after iTunes U, this is, is possibly the largest collection of OER in, in the world. Um, I can't remember how many it's got there now, it's probably getting close to 400,000 resources that you can find within Expert. Um, that's great, there's loads of stuff in there, but it's also starting to become well, one of its downsides as well. It's got a bit unwieldy and trying to find things in there requires a little bit of searching, a little bit of patience. So, um, we know we've got a bit more work to do on, on this one, but in terms of the patient, you go for OER that's aggregated in one place, um, an expert might be something worth checking out. Um, like many institutions, you also go to our YouTube channel, um, YouTube Edu channel. Um, and what I'm going to talk about a little bit today is, is an, an image searcher as well. So, expert attribution, which allows you to go find images that are created for Commons license and then automatically attribute the has anybody used that, that tool product when you show me the stuff you work you used to so, um, Most people are not in there, so I spent very little time on that. Um, I'm sure you put the things I really want to talk about and what the abstract is about but this presentation is um, the movement of that expert image finding functionality into Moodle. So currently it's, it's sat outside on, on the open web uh, and now we've built some plugins that um, make that available for Moodle. Uh, we're releasing those openly back to the Moodle community once we're happy. Them. Um, so I'll talk about that. And also then I'll talk about um, the uh, initial work with, with FutureLearn, which I have to say has been incredibly positive. Um, we've ran two loops and we've talked about them in the place of comments, but um, in terms of opening up those pages as well, as well um, it's been a, a positive experience for us. Okay, so, so at the heart of the kind of Moodle plugin work is, is really that the problem with which you, you guys have looked at, um, at the expert attribution thing already, you obviously all aware of and, and this works in OER, the difficulty of finding and using images and the licensing of images, the primary problems of them and, and so forth. So um, we built an, an attribution service that allows you to find and, and search and search for images. And I think what else?
haven't seen the original on the web version. Um, so, what, this is a, a system that allows you to, I know a lot of the United States that would really quickly show this in for those who haven't seen it before, this one's seen it somebody else. Um, this is an image search engine searching for Creative Commons um, only licensed resources. And it's a little bit of a type of search, it's searching the, the Flickr database uh, based on the, the keyword tag that's placed in, in um, Flickr. So, it's found kind of a whole bunch of results. In here, you get to grab the image with that attribution, grab it for those searches online too, because if that's something you can use, embed it straight into PowerPoint or grab the embed code. So if I've done this, what it's done is grab the image and it's put the license information at the bottom of the image so you can save that, take it away, and it satisfies creative commons and best practice for the that image. Okay, so for those that haven't seen this before, that, that's really what I'm talking about. Uh, and the new bit we've built, for those that got me and weren't interested in using it, I should say um, this plugin work was funded by JISC and HA as part of the UK OER program. I had a little bit of understanding left in uh, JISC and that was so Okay, so I've been playing with this, uh, there's, a, there's a few different options in here, so I've put them in here already, but there's three different choices that you can do with, with this. You can do what I just did, have a look in Flickr, grab that image back and it'll be, be uh, available in the page. There's an uploader where if you've got your own images on your desktop, you can upload an image as, as you would to say anything, but it will add the attribution to the image as well. And also if you've got a URL, and um, maybe you're on the web for an image, not for a page, you can put that in here as well and it will attribute the image target from, from the URL, which is something that we've been having before. And so the way that you do this is put all Moodle users wherever you've got. So just the attribution license, 
and that way we can have to try and use the tool to help academics or people understand the different versions of the licenses we've got. If we provide the most open version, version of the license only, then that, that takes care of that, that particular area. Um, for the uploading, for the attributions of the, the, the images of the URLs, you can choose an all rights reserved option, which I know feels closed, but it, it maximises the, the use of the tool and then it provides the user with a range of choices. We decided we didn't want to limit it just down to, to Creative Commons, because it might be a useful tool anyway for OER publication if you want to mark a particular image as all rights reserved. Say if a third party said that's the only way that they have computers to use your image. That would then allow you to publish the wider OER with that restricted image within it. So we, we thought that was fine to do as well. Um, and again, I think we mentioned earlier on that um, we use the URL to specify the URL for the image, not for the page, which we found actually was quite difficult to do for the page because it pulled all of the thumbnails off the page for the um, embedding images as well. Okay, so um, future learn. Um, I'm sure I'm telling you stuff you already know, but uh, Future Learn First UK group provider set up by the, the OU. There's more than 20 institutional partners. Courses started to be delivered in September, October um, last year. Also partnerships with the British Library and the British Council. Um, and register to access courses for free. And then as a learner, if you want to, you can choose to buy a statement of participation, um, which is happening for most courses that are running now. And also for, for some courses and, and, and potentially more in the future possibility of sitting at an, at an exam and getting a different certificate based on, on the exam attendance. So um, we're no different in, in, in that in terms of, in terms of the, the future and contract and how that works. Um, the way that we're trying to think about this is obviously there's a lot of hype about moves, I'm not going to go into that and you know what, what you feel about them. But for, for us we're trying to find a way that it, that it makes sense for, for Nottingham and Initially for us, that's really trying to get the idea of, of using them to inform our own discipline's practice, our online practice, and also allowing us to, to innovate and to see what we might want to bring back to, to support our own students in, in terms of online. This really comes into place. We've got campuses in China, Malaysia, and Nottingham. And before we joined Future Learn, we started to explore how we might use online more to join those campuses. So we've been doing some Nottingham open online courses uh, I'm not going to say new, even though it's written up there, because that's terrible to play a new, but it is new. Um, my boss has trademarked that, so uh, no one's laughing now. He's going to see the side of it, so that's, that's a definite place to uh, go with my boss. So we might have to delete that out. Um, so, um, but, but putting to the, the, the serious point, um, NOOCs for us, or open online courses across the campuses, is something that we've been wanting to do for a while. We've run um, a couple of these now. And they've been really successful, so around um, just under a thousand students, I think, on the first one, a few less on the second one. And for us, that's um, a, a real kind of um, win, it's something we'll be moving towards. So, with MOOCs coming along, same kind of pedagogy is really helping us to think about how we might innovate and, and work within our own registered students, as well as all the other potential benefits that, that MOOCs might, might bring. So, um, we're really pleased with, with what's going on with Future Learn at the moment. The partnership scene seems great. Uh, feels very entrepreneurial and is allowing us to, to innovate. Other things we're interested in is, I'm sure you've read a hundred times for different institutions when you read new articles, but kind of showcasing our own research and um, improvements to talk postgraduate seems more realistic based on the kind of data that, that um, we're seeing from MOOCs at the moment. Um, a big one that we feel there is an opportunity area engagement with the alumni through CPD, whether that be through our kind of Moodle based MOOCs or more, more widely through MOOCs, it is something that we're considering at the moment, but see that as a real um, possibility to bring alumni into the, the, the learning experience with students and academics all, all bouncing around in that, in that same online course. So that's something that we're really interested in. Research partnerships. Uh, another thing we're interested in, transitioning in and out, so using these things also potentially around off office stages for um, helping uh, people understand what, what the Nottingham not offering is. So, uh, wherever you stand on, on, on MOOCs, how do you feel about them? Um, we, we see value in, in them and we're trying to put through the hype and really decide what it is that, that makes them right for us to do. Um, so, as I said, we've delivered, delivered two so far, and one on sustainability from different subject perspectives. Uh, one called How to Read, Read a Mind, which was a two week course with data sustainability and an eight week course. Um, we've got another couple scheduled for, um, for later this year. So, uh, sustainability Society, you will run again as a slightly shorter course. 
um, and or whether we all need to sign on to this one, how to reach your boss. Uh, there's a one that's coming up later in the year as well. Um, after my comment previously, I'll probably be forced to take this course. <laughs> that that uh, but, um, so for, for this year, we've got another couple in the pipeline that haven't been announced yet. So um, but I guess that the big point here is that we could be running tons of these if, if interest um, is anything to go by. Our problem for the next 12 uh, to 24 months is going to be deciding which ones we want to do. We've already got enough ideas and genuine interest to probably want run one every other month for a couple of years. It's that kind of interest level that we're getting from, from staff on this. And we're, we're taking a step back now and saying, well, what is the offering? What do we want to do with these? What, what is the strategic direction? We've kind of done a couple because we could, and then we had some interest, we wanted to get going, but what's the real strategic direction now? What do we want to do with these things? OK, so looking at sustainability society view as um, a bit of a case study, um, I guess we were, we were looking a little bit here in terms of Think about opening up this MOOC as an OER because it was based on OER content in the first place. So the transition um, for us might have been a bit, bit easier than me for some other institutions thinking about this. And uh, this course is based on OER that we produced a couple of years ago uh, as part of a just funded project. Um, but 60% of the, the MOOC content um, is based on third party, or is um, third party OER, so text, images, videos, or a bunch of stuff. So it's a, it is a real example of that. Um, an OER based course, and then we released that course under um, Creative Commons license as well. Um, the institutional license um, is an um, attribution non commercial share alike, so we don't have to worry too much about kind of con conflicts with, with, with licensing. Um, it it kind of matched with the one that we use. And I know non commercial comes in for some, some criticism. Um, that license was really set for a number of years ago, and we're very open to kind of discussions about where that might go and the benefits or not of non commercial. So don't read too much into it and the license that we select for how we some of that's a little bit less. Um, what else have we got here? So um, we use a whole bunch of different resources and um, it really worked well for us to go from OER to um, to, to MOOCs. Um, we had a bunch of ebooks that were released as OER um, which you can imagine spike on numbers of their downloads went went through the roof when we started directing people from um, from future to our free download download content. Um, so we, we saw those downloads go through the roof, uh, both in terms of iBooks and also in terms of ebooks. Um, where resources, third party resources were non commercial, we made the decision um, to ask each of the rights holders of, of that non commercial material whether they were comfortable with us using their content in, in a, a MOOC, which would have commercial connotations if you went on to buy a, a certificate. Um, no one said no, we had a couple of people that didn't um, respond at all. Um, my only feeling is if, if people wanted to use our non-commercial OER in, in, in MOOCs for asking us, that would be absolutely fine as long as the course was, was freely available in any commercial aspects where we're downstream of accessing the content personally <coughs> and also from a number of people in the OER world that they kind of seem to see the same as me that non-commercial should be okay. But because it was our first one, we didn't want any reputational problems. So we thought well, we'd go, go and ask for <coughs> And the experience of talking to people was positive. We made a few mistakes with attribution, so it helped tighten that up. Um, and also, some people suggested some of our real content. Um, oh, yeah, so our plan is well, wherever we can, we will release MOOCs as we are. So our plan is wherever we can to release <coughs> Um, our moves as OER, um, but with OER across the institution is, is opt-in, so if the authors choose not to, that's absolutely fine, but um, in, in terms of the team wanting to do it, that, that's an aspiration, um, and um, future learning will be happy with the courses as OER as well, so on the um, UK OER distribution list, there's a bit kind of to and fro in about moves and OER from our my personal experience, been absolutely no issue with the future learning on this sort of thing very willing to have conversations about what institutions want to do um, and you know, you're what um, positive relationships in this particular area. So, um, that's all I've got to say. Um, I'll take questions if you've got it. Thank you. So questions? Statements really interesting. 
Tony Cochran from the British Open University. Um, going back a long way into the presentation, really, with the automatic attribution um, banner across the photos, how easy is it for people to then strip that out subsequently? Really easy. So, yeah, if they choose to copy, copy it off the, off the image, they can do. Um, so, yeah, if they choose to do that, then they can. Um, yeah. um, but for us, having that ability saves a bunch of time. So, if someone chooses to do that, that's true. Megan, oh. Um, Shannon from the University of Nottingham. Um, I was just actually wondering which faculty um, hands you the most stuff to put out as OER. Um, politics and international relations um, gave us 100% of the um, course packs, so um, module handbooks is, is the right, right term. So um, we released those as OER, and that might seem kind of a flat OER, but actually it was quite powerful when we dig into it because mm -hmm. in those handbooks they've got. A list of all the lectures, the schedule that goes on, the reading lists for all of them, wider, um, wider links to, to web resources as well, um, and also some test, ex past exam questions and also essay questions. So, from a potential informal distance learner, you could almost kind of study the course and test yourself um, based on those resources. So, um, they've given us a whole bunch of stuff, but they also do a whole bunch of stuff on their own as well. So, a politics in 60 seconds series, which was really successful. Um, and also that they'll be no doubt doing some stuff in the middle of the collection. Mm, yeah, thank you. Megan Quinton Baxter, Newcastle University. Um, thanks, Steve. Always good to hear an update from Nottingham, and I enjoyed Shannon's uh, presentation this morning too, from what I, I was yeah. able to pick up from that. Um, you mentioned experts in your presentation, and I just wondered I adore experts, and I'm having some troubles with making it work properly. It just yeah, seems yeah. a little bit rough around the edges. Yeah, um, are we able to beat anybody up, um, either singly or collectively, in order to support you in ensuring that this remains an active tool that the HE sector can, can use? Because, uh, I mean, if there's anything that we can do that would uh, persuade Pat or anybody else to um, take the roughness out of it, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something we, we agree with and kind of alluded to in, in the presentation that it, it, it's really kind of gone further than we could have ever, ever imagined the work Pat did on it. It was fantastic for this and no Pat. And yeah, it's something that, that we're thinking about doing. The challenge we have at the moment is it's a very big uh, new delivery schedule this year. It's the same set of developers that, that work on that. So um, we're, we're very aware that we can do it with, with, with some work and, and talking to Andy and various people about how we might make that happen. The priority and where it sits with all the rest of the world that we've got. Not the right answer. No, no, <laughs> the, the honest one, I'd, ra I'd, rather, I'd rather do that kind of, yeah, perhaps. But, but we do know where it is and that's why we'll always do talk about the fact that we feel like we could do with some more, more resources coming into it as well. Um, Steve? From here. Uh, hello. <laughs> Hi, um, Mads from uh, Biblio. Um, you were saying or mentioned briefly um, that part of this is also in a way to, to highlight the university yeah. and the teachers and, and the faculties. Yeah. Now, how do you long term see the role of, of something like MOOCs and Future Learn in context to? I know that you, I'm asking you because the University of Nottingham do so much on YouTube, as an example. How does YouTube compare to MOOCs? What are the scale? The, can you actually recruit by YouTube, or is this better at recruiting real students? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I, I think it's pr pretty early days for us, really, on, on knowing what, what future Learn can, can provide in terms of um, transfer to, to recruitment. Um, <coughs> Scalability-wise, YouTube is much easier, because really it's, um, staff will produce videos in, in an unproduced, unsupported way in, in very many occasions with which we can release, whereas um, the creation of the MOOCs is, is a big commitment. Uh, there's a lot of time and effort goes into them, so they're very, very different things. Uh, in terms of knowing, I would suspect there'll be more chance of recruitments from MOOCs to two courses. My gut feel is at the minute that'd be more on the postgraduate side than the undergraduate side, but it's still very early days in terms of knowing whether what we think translates to actual results. We have time for one more question. Hi, Megan. 
Um, I recently had a, heard a talk by Edinburgh about their course era experience, and I'm not sure what information they could get back from course era, but I know they did a survey themselves. I'm just wondering, do you get any better information back from Future Learn about how successful you've been, you have any metrics, things like that? Yeah, we, we do get, get some metrics, so you get um, in kind of real time metrics, so you get to see you know, um, how many people have um, registered and various things connected to that drop off rates, engagement rates, um, in terms of how people are commenting and those types of things. So you get some real time data that's useful. Um, and then there's a data pack that you can get um, a pre course survey, but you get the data pack in the post course survey as well. So it's still a little bit early day, days, days with that as well, but um, not just saying this because we're in partnership, but genuinely enjoying the relationship with future learning and the aspirations for what they want to do with things like learning analytics, things like data, and, and driving decisions and discussions about what makes my work going forward. So, yeah, the, the, the answer to this is yes, we get this. Just as an ad, is any of that going to be made public? Um, yes, well, so Future Learn released um, some anonymised data based on their first eight courses, I believe it was, before Christmas. So some of that data is available on um, I believe whether they, um, I think they did some comparisons against um, movie providers in the US, is that right? Yeah. Um, so they did some comparisons of engagement stats versus um, Coursera and edX across the first eight courses that Future and ran the engagement stats held up um, very well. Um, so there is a little bit of data out there, and, um, but yeah, I'm sure more data will be coming from future and once they're happier about which metrics they want to talk about and um, making the case of the right to make the right. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, Sustainability Society News starts on June 16, 2014. <laughs> <laughs> register on the FutureLearn website at futurelearn.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get Steve in. Thank you.